What's up, everyone, and happy Monday. I hope you had a great and relaxing weekend because the stock market is about to heat up very quickly. We are heading into one of the worst weeks of the year, seasonality-wise. On top of that, there was some big news in Taiwan this weekend, and uh, tensions are rising very quickly in the Middle East as a U.S.-owned vessel was struck by a ballistic missile today. So we have a lot to talk about. There have also been some significant developments in the cannabis industry lately as well as we are heading into the very important 2024 election year. But we have a lot to talk about today and we have some great setups towards the end of the video. So stick with us all the way to the end and Tom, let's get right into it. Yeah, last week was actually pretty good for the stock market. If we kind of go back and do a quick little recap here, you know, we opened Monday, started ripping higher, and it's just been holding up around this recent high. And you can see there's actually a double top right here at 478.50, and I think this has to be on watch going into this week. Like, if the market starts to break this all this high here, it'll be running up to all-time highs, just under 480, and maybe even touching those. So we'll have to watch a lot of these key stocks like Microsoft, NVIDIA, and others that have been running up and continuing to push the market higher because if these start breaking out again we might start to see the market you know get back to those all-time highs so that's going to be on watch this week and of course mike uh that there's a lot of stuff going on internationally that could actually change this you know we go over to the spy and it's been lingering around these highs and we've been seeing tensions start to heat up in the Middle East and specifically uh, with Ye at, in Yemen here. Uh, there's a lot of targets that the U.S. and U.K. has been striking uh, lately and it's been causing a lot of controversy, you know, between I guess we'll say like the Middle East and the United States. So uh, we have to keep this on the radar, Mike. It could be one of those black swan events if we start, you know, taking things to the next level. Exactly. And another thing with all of these rising tensions in the Middle East, um, shipping prices are rising quite a bit, which will also have a pretty bad effect on the overall inflation problem that the global economy is still battling to this day. So, you know, the main thing to know is that tensions in the Middle East are not good. And uh, the problem is that they're uh, not really dying down at all. If anything, they're getting even worse. So that's not good. And on top of that, there was also a pretty important election in Taiwan this weekend, where basically there were like, um, either one of two candidates were going to win the election, obviously, and uh, it was a relatively close race between the pro-Taiwan candidate and then the pro-China candidate, but it looks like the pro-Taiwan uh, pro candidate won, and uh, China might not like that. This is where we get into like the tinfoil hat side of the video, but basically, if you look at Taiwan from China's perspective, um, if there was ever a point in time where you would want to take Taiwan... Now would be a pretty decent time, given that uh, the U.S. is currently tied up in Ukraine right now. They are currently having increasing tensions by the day in the Middle East. On top of that, it is a crucial election year. So if you're China, you know you might be looking pretty closely at, ta at Taiwan right now, especially given that the candidate you wanted to win just lost. Yeah, exactly. And that's going to cause a lot of... I would say volatility with these China stocks this week, Mike. I mean, uh, I would think that there would be a few stocks moving, like maybe Baba, Queb, which is the ETF, maybe even TCEHY, like Tencent Gaming. We might start to see a little bit of volatility out of these China stocks. And even going back to the Yemen um, situation, uh, we might even see crude oil get a little bit volatile. Crude oil started kind of popping up a little bit uh, this morning because crude oil is actually open right now with futures. If you guys didn't know that, it's actually been open since last night. So um, the futures market stays open sometimes when the market's closed. But uh, we can see oil starting to pop up since this news kind of started hitting the markets a little bit. But uh, going back to Taiwan, Mike, that's a pretty interesting situation. I know China was was kind of threatening a little bit with this right and it looks like they ended up losing so if they i guess live up to their threats they might uh do something fairly soon i don't know when they're gonna do it i know the u.s was thinking like 2025 or 2027 but uh, it just makes sense strategically that they would try to you know do that now obviously uh before i guess this guy takes full control and everything so it's going to be an ongoing situation, Mike, and I'm sure there's going to be a lot more news coming out about this over the next month or so as uh, China you know, tries to control things a little bit more. Yep, so we shall see. 
On another note, Tom, we are coming into uh, that time of the year where the market normally uh, performs pretty poorly. We could see that the S&P 500 performance during MLK Junior Week going all the way back to 1998 is normally red, but we could see that there have been a handful of instances where it's red a good amount. I mean, Tom, in 2022, uh, this week was down around 5.5%, and there have been multiple other parts throughout history where this week is just a bloody one. Yeah, and even 2023, which ended up being a great year, even this week was terrible. I mean, it was down quite a bit. It wasn't like it was down like 5% or anything, but, you know, down like about, you know, half a percent to a percent, still pretty significant for the S&P, which generally has pretty green weeks overall besides for a couple months. So, yeah, to see this going on with this week, Mike, is going to be a Pretty interesting. I think that we'll end up seeing the market maybe pull back a little bit. And this is coming right as SPY is at that all-time high. And we go back, we zoom out, and it has this big double top last week at 478.50. If we keep rejecting here, uh, that might be you know one of these times where we see another one of those short-term pullbacks. We saw this happen just a couple weeks ago. If we go out to the hourly chart, you know the SPY started pulling back down from that 478 mark and ended up going all the way to like 465 before truly coming back up to retest the these highs. So we'll have to see. Last time we were here, we rejected and it looks like right now it's just kind of consolidating. So I'm going to definitely have my eyes on those bigger tech stocks this week. If we see NVIDIA and Microsoft continuing to rip the way that they are, I, it's going to be hard to slow that market down. But uh, I think that they'll start to slow soon because things are getting a little bit parabolic out there. Exactly. Like that's the thing. It's like if we do start to see a pullback, odds are it can be like a decent sized pullback given that the market is basically at all-time highs, and we have a handful of some pretty big uh, bearish uh, catalysts going on right now. But at the same time, it's like if the market just keeps on marching higher, it's hard to fight against that. So I think this week is going to be a game of complete momentum. You know, you just got to follow those flows and, and ride them, right? So we'll talk more about that as we get into some specific setups in just a couple minutes. But Tom, there was also some decent news with the uh, marijuana legalization side of things as well. Yeah, and we've been talking about this reclassification news for a little while now, and it's good to see more news coming out about it. So essentially, the DEA has marijuana classified as a Schedule One drug, and we all know that that's pretty stupid, right? I mean, it's up there with uh, heroin. I mean, come on, guys. We all know after years of research and even states legalizing marijuana that we know it's nothing like heroin or fentanyl or, or anything along those lines. So the FDA is suggesting that they take it down to Schedule Three, so that would be interesting. I hope that they actually do this at the end of the day though the DEA makes the final decisions on this which kind of sucks right because they've had it so high for so long they I don't know they might want to keep it higher but given that the FDA is kind of suggesting that they bring it down hopefully they start listening and it would make sense right with how many states are legalizing and stuff now it, it's about time that these MJ stocks get some help and if this happens it should help them out a lot we've been talking about banking bills going through for MJ stocks and if it ends up getting reclassified that'll probably just open up so many avenues for marijuana businesses Exactly. And this ties right into like my first and most watched uh, setup going into this week, which is ticker symbol MSOS. So basically, for those of you who don't know, MSOS is an ETF or a bunch of different stocks all under one ticker symbol, specifically for US based cannabis companies. And we can see that over like the past couple weeks and months, this thing has been uh, flying in a pretty good way. Now, basically, when it comes to these types of stocks, it's it's all based off of like news and hype and just current sentiment at the time. 2024 is going to be a pivotal year for many reasons, but when we see news articles like Tom just read, that can bring in a lot of hype and bullish sentiment to the industry. And many times in the past, we've seen marijuana stocks rise a ton uh, whenever there's good news. At the same time, whenever there isn't news, they don't really move that much. But we're starting to see some good news come into this industry, good volumes uh, creeping in, you can say. And in the past, these stocks have gone parabolic. So I said this a couple weeks ago, and I'm going to say it again. I'm watching MSOS to the upside. Um, the more volume the more momentum, the better with this setup. But either way, it's, it's one I'm definitely going to be watching very closely.
Yeah, and it just broke out above its recent high here too, which was right around eight bucks. It kind of rejected there and had a few red days last week. And, you know, on uptrends like this, I love it because it's like staircasing. It's giving you little areas to buy in on these little dips. So I love it. Uh, keep going. MSOS, there's a lot of momentum here in that article only solidifies the play even more uh, with my first setup Mike I'm looking at AMD this week and I go out to the daily chart and AMD is kind of one of those big tech stocks it's up around recent highs right now it's sitting right around 150 and double topping so I'm going to watch this for a potential rejection back to the downside here especially with the market kind of at all-time highs too now look if the market opens up Monday or uh, Tuesday morning and starts ripping above uh it's all time high, Nvidia is running, and AMD ends up following too. Then obviously, don't play this down. But if we open up tomorrow morning and we start to see AMD falling under like 145 support and starting to break below that low of last week, I think that we could see some great opportunities down. So I'd prefer it down, but at the same time, be adaptable right now because if these stocks do keep running, that's where you're going to have to take that opportunity. Exactly. I love how you said that. Be adaptable this week. You know, there's a handful of bearish uh, events happening, but at the same time, if uh, the bullish pressure is just too strong, then uh, don't try to short something that's not falling, right? You have to be able to adapt, and that's the name of the game. Uh, going into my next setup, I am looking at UVXY to the upside. This is basically a stock slash setup that will pop to the upside in a major way if we do see a decent size sell off. Um, if we see volatility, you know, increase in the markets, UVXY has a lot of room to run, but we need that like. I don't want to say panic selling pressure, but in order for this setup to work, you need the selling pressure to be at least somewhat strong. Yeah, and a few weeks ago, we saw the market kind of dip back to the downside a little bit. And even UVXY for a few days there ran up like 20%. Like that that's pretty good for a stock like this. And on some of these other downtrends, like we go back to September of last year where the market pulled back, you know, this ended up going up like 50, almost 60% there. So UVXY can be extremely enticing if that market drops. And with us being at that all-time high, if we uh, keep rejecting here, it should be really fun. Now with my next up, I'm looking at one to the upside here and I think that this is a fun stock for a couple reasons. It's Zoom. I know Mike and myself have talked about it for a long time, and there's actually a good technical setup here. So it recently broke a purple trend line that we've been watching for a long time. There's been a lot of rejections off of this level. It broke out a few months ago, and now it dipped back down and kind of confirmed off it off of it perfectly over the past couple weeks. So I'm going to keep watching this stock for more momentum back up. What I like about it is it's not correlated to the SPY very well. It has weak correlation, as you can see in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen. And with that weak correlation, if we start to see these other tech stocks like AMD, NVIDIA, even the overall market like SPY dip down, we might see a rotation into some of these smaller uh, I, I don't want to call Zoom small, but smaller than NVIDIA and those bigger stocks, uh, rotation into these that are more beaten down. So I'll be watching Zoom next week for a possible run. And I love the technical setup too, which makes it even better. Love to hear it. All right, Tom, well, we are all set to get right into the momentum plays. And with the first one, we have one of the powerhouse bank stocks, JP Morgan, to the downside. And Tom, this one was running with some decent momentum on Friday in pre-market, but uh, the sellers came in pretty hard with this one and smacked it right back down. Wow, that was quite the drop there by JP Morgan. And I know they were getting pretty close to all-time highs too. So I'm going to watch for them to fall under that low of last week, right around like 168.50, not counting pre-market that is, but watch 168.50. If we break under there, I think we could start to head maybe down to like that 165-ish area, which was like the low of that pre-market drop. So let's watch for those banks. They, uh, that was quite a volatile move. And keep in mind, a lot of banks have been running a lot lately, so they're pretty overextended on the daily chart too. No doubt about that. Uh, with the next one, we have GLD to the upside, which can be like a, a nice spot for uh, like a nice safe haven in the event that, uh, you know, some of these geopolitical risks end up happening. Yeah, I love this one. I think intraday, if it can break above 190.50 tomorrow, I think we could get a nice intraday play to it to the upside. And I even like it overall for the week, but watch it above 190.50 going into tomorrow. All righty, and then with the last one, we have Baba for both directions. This one should be uh, extra volatile heading into tomorrow, given the uh, Taiwan news over the weekend. Yeah, that's wild. It's kind of in a bit of a channel that it formed on the final two days of the week last week. If it can break under 71.50 down here, I'm throwing the line on right now, then go ahead and 
Look at it to the downside. Now, if it recovers and breaks back up, I would say make it break 7270. If we can break there, then go ahead and look at calls. And keep in mind, we might see a big move in pre-market, and then it might continue off that move. All right, sounds good. So we have both directions from Baba. If it breaks below that lower one, we're watching it down. We have the upside level for a potential play to the upside as well. Don't forget about GLD with the upside level there. And then JP Morgan with the downside level there. These are the momentum plays for tomorrow. They are only potential plays if they break the levels Tom listed. But now it is about that time to get right into today's Three million dollar big money trade of the day, and uh, this one's pretty interesting. We are looking at ticker symbol IWM, and for those of you who don't know, IWM is kind of like spy, but it's more like for like smaller cap companies. And long story short, a lot of times IWM kind of leads the way, especially like in bearish situations compared to spy. So, for example, let's say people are a little bit scared about the market or the economy, IWM will normally fall before SPY does because uh, the IWM style stocks are, you know, smaller companies that might not be as well prepared to take on the hit of a, you know, worsening economy. So long story short, we have IWM with a $3 million put play from Friday where the big money bought the IWM 186 strike puts and shorted the 184 strike puts, both of which expire on March 15th of 2024. This is a bearish play where the big money wants IWM to fall. And, uh, you know, this is technically a put debit spread, but if you want to make your life uh, nice and simple, there's nothing wrong with just uh, getting IWM, like, you know, let's say like the 186 puts or even like a higher strike. Uh, but the main thing here is the expiration date, which is goes all the way out to March. But either way, um, I don't think this is a bad setup and it looks like the big money is, uh, you know, wouldn't be surprised if IWM pulled back more. Yeah, and I actually would not be surprised either. Like you said, a lot of these companies might not be the best in IWM. And, you know, there's, there might be a few outliers, right? Like if the market drops, there might be a few that end up popping pretty well. But we're talking about like the majority of stocks in the Russell. So um, whenever we're looking at this, Mike, uh, there's even a big channel that IWM has been stuck in for a while. This overhead resistance, like right around 200 to 205, has been huge. There has been rejection after rejection at this level as well. Plus, it just ran up a ton from that recent low. Um, this is going to be pretty crazy. I mean, I know it's not like, you know, like NVIDIA's move to the upside, but IWM's up like 26% from that low there from November. That's a pretty good little run there by, you know, an indice like that. So I'll be watching for it to pull back too. I think the big money was smart getting a spread like this to kind of minimize risk. But at the same time, it's $3 million, Mike. That's that's pretty hefty for a uh, for a big money play, especially one, you know, going uh going bearish here. So be careful, guys. I know a lot of people have been looking at IWM to the upside lately. So just be a little bit careful. You know, the, the market is in a weird spot and there's been a lot of bearish uh, news articles coming out lately and just a lot of tensions across the geopolitical spectrum. There we go. Uh, Tom, on another note, uh, we also have uh, earnings season slowly uh, coming back into effect. What's on the uh, schedule for this week? Yeah, Tuesday, we got some more banks. So Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, PNC, even interactive brokers and after hours. So watch out for them. On Wednesday, we have Charles Schwab, the now owners of Thinkorswim, for everyone out there who uses them. Uh, Thursday, we have Fastenal, PPG, Friday, Ally Bank. Honestly, it's a bit of a boring week for earnings, but there's a lot of banks out there and they will make a big impact on the market. So keep your eyes on these. Next week, though, we'll get into some really fun tech stocks. Exactly. So while this week's a little bit boring for earnings, don't worry. Just wait another week and then uh, the excitement is on. We'll say that. And then uh, also for this week, um, it's not too crazy for like the economic schedule side of things. Like there's like retail sales on Wednesday before open. And, you know, there's a couple other events sprinkled in here and there. But it's a relatively calm week, which I think is a good thing this week because we already have some pretty key events uh, going on around the world like Taiwan, Everything in Yemen, we have, you know, the seasonally weak part of the year that we're heading into. So overall, I'm perfectly fine with there not being too many huge earnings or economic data points because it can just like let us uh, trade the price action freely without having to worry about one event or another. 
Yeah, I actually really like that as well. And I, I've been loving a lot of the technical setups lately, like a lot of these double tops going on. There's been a lot of solid rejections and the market's been like fairly consistent bouncing off a lot of these levels. So I'm going to really watch this week. I know that that seasonality chart is definitely a little bit scary showing that this week is normally a pretty red week overall. Even in 2023, when the market was green, this week ended up red. And during election years, at the beginning of the year, we normally see little down downtrends happen until like the middle of February or March. So we have to be a little bit careful here, especially with this all time high. I'm definitely going to have my eyes on Nvidia and Microsoft. If they keep running, it's going to be hard to stop. So uh, let, let's hope that they actually pull back a little bit. Cause I think the opportunities will be even better on the pullbacks. For sure. And, you know, so far we're a couple weeks into 2024. If it's been great for you, then uh, keep at it. But even if it's been a slow start, keep your head up high and uh, be ready to uh, swing this week because there should be some pretty good opportunities. I'm very excited and uh, you guys should be as well. The market is right at all time highs. There should be a lot of great movement and uh, a lot of opportunity throughout this week. So keep your heads up high. Let's crush it this week. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. We post all the time. And in each video, we go over some of the best setups for the next day the most important news, earnings, and basically everything you can need to know. We spend hours uh, making these videos where it's like a 20 to 25 minute video where you could understand everything nice and easily and without having to do all of the hours worth of research that we do. So join the Stocked Up crew. We'd love to have you. And besides that, guys, let's have an amazing week in the markets.